Thanks for joining us on the journey through the Gospel of Mark. I'm very excited as we continue today to look at Mark chapter 1. We'll begin in verse 9 in just a moment. I remind you in the opening verses of Mark chapter 1, we were reminded of the simple truth that uh, there is good news, and that good news is found in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus was prophesied about. They, the, the prophets said that Jesus would be coming, and he did come. And when John the Baptist came, who was the one who was preparing the way for Jesus, he was quick to point toward Jesus as the one who had both the power and the authority, the ability. He was the one who was sent to change our lives. He was the one who was sent as our Messiah to save us. We pick up in verse 9. Uh, Previously, I also remind you that John tells us he had been in the wilderness baptizing others as the start of a new life, as they confessed their sins, that they would come and say, I want to be baptized symbolically so that everyone knows I'm beginning life anew. Immediately, we pick up in verse 9, and it says, In those days, at that very moment then, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee. You'll remember this is the town where Jesus was uh, raised It was a town that had not the most wonderful reputation and is a reminder without any question that uh, uh, God uses uh, people from all places. And certainly Jesus came from Nazareth, the northern part of Israel. He came and he was baptized by John in the Jordan. I think it's important, and I don't want to go off too far on a rabbit trail, but it's important for us to remember that Jesus, when he was baptized, He was baptized um, uh, symbolically to show us how we should respond to him. He had no need to be baptized for repentance because he was sinless. He never sinned as he walked upon this earth, though he was tempted by sin. We'll see that in just a moment. But certainly he was not one who sinned, so it wasn't necessary for him to participate in the baptism of repentance. But he He was baptized symbolically so that uh, everyone else could follow the pattern of Jesus that we would then live out as Jesus uh, walked and as he lived here upon this earth. Uh, Baptism was also the symbol symbol for Jesus at the beginning of a new phase of his life. The baptism was the beginning of his ministry. Luke dates the baptism somewhere around 28 AD. It's at this point that Jesus begins his public ministry that suddenly uh, that time when he had uh, was growing up as both a child and a teenager, now he's that uh, the man that uh, has walking here upon this earth that God had sent, uh, certainly God himself here. Uh, now he is taking on this new phase. It's a public phase where he begins his public ministry, so he's baptized. Uh, interesting thing, uh, quite different from many of our baptisms without any question. In verse 10, Mark tells us that when Jesus came up out of the water, when they're raising him up, immediately. And that's one of Mark's favorite words. You'll see this over and over. Uh, The word immediately pushes the story forward. He wants us to understand he's retelling it. As a matter of fact, in Mark's mind, I think he's reliving this. And he says, Jesus was baptized. And when he came up out of the water, at that very moment then, it said he saw Jesus sees us. This is a a revelation for Jesus. Mark is able to relate it to us, but this was for Jesus. This is a uh, a work, a reminder of God's work in his life and through his life. It, it says, Jesus then saw the heavens being torn open. It's interesting. It is a reminder that this is a blessing or the affirmation that's coming down from heaven. The source certainly is God. The heavens are being torn open and the spirit then is descending upon him like a dove. As a reminder that certainly because he is God, the spirit was always within him. But the affirmation to him, because Jesus is getting ready to walk through some very difficult days. He's going to experience uh, frustration in dealing with the disciples. He's going to experience uh, uh, frustrations of dealing in a fallen world, of dealing with difficult people like the Pharisees and the scribes. And this becomes a moment in time in which Jesus then is commissioned where he set forth to accomplish and fulfill the role of the Messiah that he had been sent here upon this earth. And as a visible sign to Jesus of that, uh, God sends the, 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 the spirit upon him, or at least uh, uh, sends the, the, um, the, the dove that came down or something like a dove to come upon Jesus to remind him of the spirit which exists within him. And he sends this dove. 
And then he says this, and a voice came down from heaven. God himself spoke to Jesus to affirm who Jesus was. And he says this, he says, Jesus, he says, you are my beloved son. It's interesting. Uh, when we wonder who all heard this, what we know for certain is that Jesus heard it. It's a second person pronoun, you. It's God speaking to Jesus and God is saying, Jesus, uh, you are my beloved son. The word that used there for beloved simply means that. You're my loved son. He wanted to affirm to Jesus. Jesus knew this. He wanted to affirm to him, though, that there was a consistent and constant love between him and between uh, God. The two of them certainly coexisted, and, and, and the Father speaks to the Son and says, I just want you to know I love you. And then he goes on, he says this, and with you, Jesus, I am well pleased. Uh, it's almost the sound of a proud father. It certainly is the sound of affirmation of God the Father as he looked at the life that Jesus had been living here upon this earth, as Jesus had descended into this earth, fully God, fully man, he had walked, and God says, Jesus, I am well pleased. I think it's also a future affirmation that everything that Jesus does, God is pleased with. And so he says this, Jesus, uh, you are my son. With you, I am well pleased. It's such a reminder to us as we begin that we always need to keep in perspective who God is, uh, that, and, and more specifically, who Jesus is. That Jesus is God's son who's come to earth, and he found the good favor. He found the pleasure of God in his life. Uh, in a much less way, I would say that you and I uh, want to make certain that uh, we're walking upon this earth in such a way that, um, that, that we are pleasing to God. We should we should live in such a way that when God looks at us, that he says, this is my child, I am well pleased. We all know the pride of a parent when they see their children accomplishing good things and, and certainly um, uh, living a life more so than just accomplishing good things, but living a life that is a reflection of, uh, of God. And that's, that's one of the joys of being a parent is to be able to say, that's my child, I am so pleased. And that should be what we strive for in our lives. Jesus Christ accomplished that. He did that. He set the example for us as well. And you'll notice then that verse 12 follows and says, And the Spirit then, the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. Mark abbreviates the story of the wilderness temptation in this passage, but we're reminded that while Jesus was in the wilderness that he was tempted by Satan. Uh, it is interesting that the Spirit is the one who sends Jesus into the wilderness. The wilderness is a place of barrenness in Scripture. It's a place where God often speaks. It's a place where there is a seeking for God. And Jesus finds himself in the wilderness there being tempted by Satan. Uh, you'll remember that Jesus um, did not succumb to sin. Uh, he was tempted but never sinned. Uh, the wrong that you and I experience is not in the temptation. The wrong is in the sin. We are all tempted because we're humans and we live here upon this earth. Jesus experienced temptation as well. The scripture reminds us of that. But he didn't sin. Jesus experienced temptation. But look at this. I think this is interesting. It says he was in the wilderness for 40 days. We know from our Old Testament stories, 40 days is always a significant time. Uh, with Noah and with uh, the children of Israel wandering the wilderness for 40 years. That 40 is a time where God is at work, not where God is absent, but where God is at work. And you'll see that they're in the wilderness 40 days, and he was being tempted by Satan. Now, we do also remember from studying James and other books that uh, God is not one who tempts us. This is Satan who tempts us. Satan desires for us to fall. God desires for us to succeed. And um, and it's in being tempted and standing up to the temptation that we discover strength that's in God. It does say, and I find this interesting, and uh, Mark is so full of details that his details uh, help us relive in a very vivid way the events. He says that uh, he was with the wild animals, reminding us he really was in the wilderness. He really was in a very challenging place. But Mark tells us, in Mark chapter 1, verse 13, that he wasn't alone. Uh, the angels were there. The messengers of God were caring for Jesus, even in the midst of temptation. Let me simply remind you 
we will experience times of temptation. Satan does want us to fall. But we're not alone. God has sent messengers. God himself is present. Jesus has experienced what we're walking through. And just as the angels were there ministering to him, they were caring for him. Jesus was never alone in the wilderness. So I leave you with this simple truth. As we walk through this life, one of our great desires should be to live in such a manner that God looks down and says, that's my child. With that child, I am well pleased. It doesn't happen by accident. And please hear me, it doesn't happen because we do the right things. It happens because we live the life that Christ has called us to live, that our heart is in tune with him. And then suddenly we discover that he finds pleasure in our lives. Will you live so that God finds pleasure within you? As we live for him, temptations are going to come. But I assure you, you're never alone. When you walk through moments of temptation, perhaps you're tempted to um, to sin, perhaps you're tempted to experience uh, anxiety or anger. Let me just encourage you, call upon God. He's right there with you. I'm praying for you. I pray that you'll continue to be encouraged as we look into the Word of God. I pray that God will bless you as you're on the way walking with Him.